So last time I read a list of dozens of banned firearms, mostly rifles. But today we're going to break down the proposed assault weapons ban closer and show you what else would be banned under the proposed new rules because apparently any gun can be a scary gun. Hey guys, it's Phil and you're watching the Minuteman Moment. Last time I talked about how pretty much every commonly owned semi-automatic rifle like an AR-15 or an AK-47 or even my co-worker's favorite Daewoo K2 would be banned. Let's talk about all the little details of what this bill bans which we didn't explicitly mention before. Number one, handguns. Under section 36D, which explains how a pistol can be considered a semi-automatic weapon, that's new, one of the requirements for pistols with a magazine is that they cannot be a semi-automatic version of an automatic firearm. While that seems like some normal anti-gun or fear-mongering, this one line has real repercussions. And so what this means is that any pistol that has a detachable magazine and is a version of an automatic firearm would be classified as a semi-automatic assault weapon. This is the kind of thing you would expect from some overeducated Ivy League anti-gun lawyer that has no understanding of firearms attempting to ban the scary military guns with legal jargon. And so you're asking yourself, what kind of guns is this gonna cover? Well, it's gonna cover one of the most popular lines of handguns, Glocks. Let me break this down for you. Glock makes a lot of handguns, a lot of good handguns, including the Glock 18, a fully automatic version of the Glock 17 for military and police use. And the thing is, aside from a few changes, the guns are practically identical and therefore the Glock 18 would be the automatic firearm necessary to ban all Glock derivatives. So that means even your stock 19 or Gucci out 45 would be banned. But Glocks aren't the only handguns banned. The CZ 75, Beretta 90 series, and good old must stop and power 1911 would be subject to these classifications. All these handguns families have an automatic version the gun grabbers could easily justify to ban your everyday carry or even your range toy. HR 1808 bans commonly owned self-defense handguns, far more than just braced firearms like the AR-15 or AK-47. Handguns are only a fraction of all firearms that will be banned by this assault weapons ban of 2022. Millions of Americans would be stripped of their right of what firearms they prefer to defend themselves with. This assault weapons ban will go so far as to disenfranchise citizens and good Samaritans everywhere of the ability to best defend themselves and others. Take for example the Greenwood Mall hero where Elijah Dickens used his 9mm Glock to end the threat of a mass shooter in 15 seconds. Under this new legislation that I'm talking about right now that's going on in the house, his weapon would have been banned as a semi-automatic weapon. The ban would also make the AR-15, which Stephen Williford, the hero of Sutherland Springs and GOA spokesperson used to stop a shooting at his church. What monster, who's so detached from reality, would actually want to disarm the heroes who ended mass shootings at Greenwood, Sutherland Springs, or Arvada? They need to realize the slaughter of innocents would have been far higher with this gun ban. If this passes, more innocent people will die in these evil attacks and that's gonna be on them. It's clear that being responsible for one's own protection and carrying a firearm is a better response than simply waiting for the police. Dickens took action a lot faster than the nearly 400 first responders at Robb Elementary in Uvalde, Texas. And this leads me to my next point, how normal features are banned and what it means for you. H.R. 1808 includes many ridiculous definitions that will result in the banning of far more firearms than just reading the banned list might suggest. This means that millions more gun owners would be in possession of highly regulated semi-automatic assault weapons and be subject to this unconstitutional law than Congress might realize should the following definitions remain in the bill text. Then again, maybe that's the point of all this. If you remember from last year's pistol brace rule, think of their point system, except it's more like one strike and you're out. If your gun has a detachable mag and a single one of the following, you've got a semi-automatic assault weapon under the government's special regulations. Definition of grip. The term pistol grip means a grip, a thumb hole stock, or Thornton style grip or stock, or any other characteristic that can function as a grip. The Thornton stock is the stock that basically allows AR pattern rifles to be legal in banned states. So they're basically telling you no more ARs. And here's why this matters. 
This definition includes far more than pistol grips. Instead, it includes anything that can function as a grip. That means everything from a firearms magwell to vertical grips, angled grips, and even attachments like a bipod are grips. This is extremely broad and means that anything coming off of a stock or body of the firearm that can be used to help brace the firearm would be considered a grip. Nearly every semi-automatic rifle with a detachable magazine and a magwell will now have a pistol grip, making any of the remaining characteristics irrelevant when evaluating whether your semi-auto is now a regulated assault weapon. All right, the definition of triggers. Any part, combination of parts, component, device, attachment, or accessory that is designed or functions to accelerate the rate of fire of a semi-automatic firearm, but not convert the semi-automatic firearm into a machine gun, okay? Here's why that matters. Anything that increases how fast the gun can shoot will be counted towards the definition of a semi-automatic weapon. The language here is so vague, it could cover everything from a competition trigger that requires less force to be pulled against the trigger to an adjustable gas system, which allows the user to control the amount of gas pushing back on the firearm's action. This is arbitrary and without a measurable standard is ripe for abuse in the future to allow ATF to ban whatever unpopular accessory of the day is. I guess this means the ATF is gonna be wanting me to register my trigger finger pretty soon. All right, now the definition of a threaded barrel. The term threaded barrel means a feature or characteristic that is designed in such a manner to allow for the attachment of a device such as a firearm silencer or a flash suppressor. And that's why these broad definitions are so crazy because does the Radiant Weapons Afterburner count here? I don't know, maybe, but that's what this cat and mouse game is kind of all about. They write the rules and pass the laws and then industry does what industry does and they innovate. And then who knows if their innovation meets the standard or doesn't. But here's why this definition of a threaded barrel matters. Threading on the end of a barrel is common amongst almost all rifles and it's increasingly popular on handguns because it allows the user to attach different devices like muzzle brakes, flash hiders, and suppressors. These devices don't on their own increase the lethality of a firearm and in many cases make it safer for the user to shoot, whether by reducing recoil or by providing them with a clearer sight picture of the target immediately after firing and not expelling a giant fireball out of the barrel. Additionally, this definition would end suppressor use as we know it. That's it. By adding threaded barrels to the definition of an assault weapon, this new law would ensure that suppressor owners would be unable to easily utilize their property, which they have already gone through much pain and cost and time to own and operate. Imagine not being able to use your three-pronged surefire muzzle device or your Q cherry bomb, and instead having to pin and weld a new muzzle device for every new suppressor or firearm you get. That's where they're headed. And moving on, we have the definition of a barrel shroud, everyone's favorite. The term barrel shroud means a shroud that is attached to or partially or completely encircles the barrel of a firearm so that the shroud protects the user of the firearm from heat generated by the barrel and does not include a slide that partially or completely encloses the barrel or an extension of the stock along the bottom of the barrel which does not encircle or substantially encircle the barrel. Okay. That's a lot of legalese, here's why it matters. This is a ban on the aesthetics of a firearm. The barrel shroud, or anything that covers the barrel, does not increase the lethality of a firearm. In fact, the language even acknowledges that shrouds are placed to protect the user from the heat of a barrel. This targets weapons like the AR-15, AK-47, and a lot of other semi-autos that don't have a single piece of construction that extends from the stock to the barrel. I guess Congress isn't okay with me having a piece of plastic to stop me from burning my hand because it turns my AR-15 into a weapon of war. Moving on, there's a definition of magazines. This thing just gets worse and worse. The term large capacity ammunition feeding device means a magazine, belt drum, feed strip, or similar device, including any such device joined or coupled with another in any manner that has an overall capacity of or that can be readily restored, changed, or converted to accept more than 15 rounds of ammunition and does not include an attached tubular device designed to accept and capable of operating only with 22 caliber rimfire ammunition. Oh my goodness. 
Here's why this matters. Everyone here knows why limiting magazine capacity is a bad idea. Time and time again, standard capacity magazines have proven their usefulness when dealing with single threats or groups of threats. By limiting the number of rounds that a firearm owner can have at their disposal, this assault weapons ban puts self-defenders at a distinct disadvantage. The amount of firearms that will be banned under this bill and therefore unable to be purchased if it goes into effect would be enormous. Commonly owned firearms everywhere from the AR-15 to the Glock 19 would simply be classified as assault weapons at the whim of these ignorant politicians. And that's why I'm urging you to call your representative and senators and demand they vote no on this bill. Every bill has the potential to become a real life fire exercise. The more no votes this gets in the House, the more likely it is for it to be defeated in the Senate. But the opposite is also true. The more yes votes it gets in the House, the more likely we'll see traitors in the Senate cross the aisle and compromise your Second Amendment rights. Check out the link in the description and pin comment for more. That's it for this week. I'm Phil, and this has been the Minuteman Moment.